Hi, welcome to Sumery P. My name's Sue and I love baking with spelt flour. And something that's really popular in Sweden is the cinnamon bun, which is known as kanel bulle, if I've said that correct. It's the little scrolly knotted bun with pearl sugar on top. I've been trying to perfect a recipe for you. I'm using the spelt dough that I've done in my cinnamon scrolls. I haven't quite perfected my knots. It's a technique that I think takes about 30 years to perfect. I've been doing it for about three months, but I thought I'd share it anyway. So let's get mixing. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pop all the dry ingredients. Oh, before I started, I've melted some butter. So I've melted some unsalted butter and cooling it down 50 grams. I've warmed up some milk. So there's 300 mils and I'm using oat milk because that's what I like baking with, but feel free to use regular milk. I've got two eggs on standby that I've whisked together. We're using white spelt flour. I'm using fast yeast, some salt and some spices. Now, traditionally, the Swedish um, use fresh yeast in their baking. I had dried yeast in the cupboard, so I'm just going to do it with dried yeast today. But I have been experimenting with fresh yeast. So the first thing we need to do is pop all the flour in. So I've weighed the flour. It's 515 grams and I'll pop some other measurements above. You can use cups but cups are really variant depending on how you measure your cups and how accurate you are but if you wanted a kind of an approximate cup measurement it's three cups plus three quarters of a cup. I'm going to throw in all my spices so I'm doing um, a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon and a little bit of cardamom. I'm doing oh no I'm putting a little bit of cardamom in the filling. So I'm going to pop that in just on one side and I've got one teaspoon of sugar. Now a lot of the other recipes use about a quarter of a cup of sugar. I don't like my dough or my bun to be too sweet because I think there's enough sweetness in the filling but feel free to add more sugar if that's what you want. Um, and I'm using the two teaspoons or seven grams of dried yeast. I'm just putting it away from the salt and I'm going to whisk this around a little bit. And as it's mixing around, I'm going to pour in this warm milk. So this is 300 ml of oat milk that I've heated up. And I do it for a few minutes on low just to combine everything. And then I bump it up to like a level two. Um, you can do this by hand if you want as well. One little tip with spelt flour, it doesn't need as much kneading as regular flour. So I'm going to pour this um, melted butter in. So it's 50 grams or three tablespoons. And because this has got melted butter in, I'm going to keep this bowl and pop my dough in here because I love separating my dough from this large bowl and letting it rise or prove in this. So I'm just going to leave that to one side. Another dribble I'm going to put in there. And I've been experimenting with some of my bread dough recipes that don't have any eggs or butter and just milk. But I feel that because I use the spelt flour, it kind of needs a little bit more richness and I prefer the taste with the added egg and butter, but feel free to go back to one of my bread recipes and use that with a little bit of sugar and spice to turn them into cinnamon scrolls. I'll stop talking. <laughs> and the next other thing we need to add is the egg. As I said, I've got two eggs mixed up, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal some of the egg mix and use it for my glaze later on before I bake them. So I've just taken out that much, which was about three teaspoons. I find when I use my egg wash, I never use it all and then it feels like a waste. And if you eyeball your dough and you think, oh, look, I don't know. I don't know if Sue's recipe is right. It looks a bit runny and my spelt flour's reacted differently. Just pop a little bit more spelt flour into the dough. So I'm going to bump it up to two and knead it for three minutes. Doing everything back to front, it's hard to see what I'm doing. The other thing I meant to say was this recipe is 100% white flour. And over the last few weeks, I've been experimenting with half and half, like half whole grain flour and half whole grain, I'm sorry, white flour, 70%, 30%, 100%. But the texture changes when you do the whole grain spelt flour. If you don't mind that, feel free to go ahead. Just check your hydration. Now today, for some reason, I think I need a little bit more flour. So I'm going to grab my flour out of the cupboard. Let's grab a little bowl. All well, my cups are or dirty. So I'm going to just do it with the scales. So I'm going to add in maybe an extra 20 grams to start with. 
I probably should have bumped that down. Just going to drop it back to one. Okay, that's looking better. I love covering my proving bowl with um, plastic because it creates kind of a really sealed environment. If you prefer not to use plastic and just cover it with a damp cloth. Okay, I'm going to get this out and have a look. I'm going to come this side to check it. So it's still quite loose and hydrated. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this quite hydrated for now. Let it do its, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it out of the bowl and prove it for an hour. And then if I feel that it's a little bit too loose still, I'll add a bit of flour as we're kneading it. Transfer this into a smaller bowl. You can see all the greeny bits of this, you know. <laughs> I find this bowl really heavy to use. So I often use my steel bowl or stainless steel one, but you can't see it. So I'd like to show you this one. I'm going to have to nurse it like a baby. Okay, see how it's quite hydrated and sticky and loose? I'm just going to go into the dough and just cover it with this melted butter, which was left over from what I melted. Just flip it upside down if you can, Whoop, like that. Cover it with your plastic. I pop mine in my um, microwave or in my oven, which is totally turned off, and rest it there for anything from 45 minutes to an hour. This bowl is fantastic because it's a medium-sized Pyrex bowl, and when it reaches close to the top, I know it's done. So I'm going to pop this over to one side. Um, no drafts, no windows open in a sealed spot for 45 minutes to 60 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll start doing the, I'll attempt to do the knots and the scrolling for you. While you're waiting for the dough to rise, you need to make the filling. So in here I've got two teaspoons of cinnamon, ground cinnamon and a half teaspoon of cardamom. You can leave the cardamom out, you can add more cinnamon, but this is just kind of how I like it and 100 grams of light brown sugar. So I'm going to pop this all into a small bowl. So the light brown sugar, that's about half a cup. And in here I've got some softened butter and that is um, 60 grams or a quarter of a cup. So I'm just going to like try and soften this all together. And I'm using a fork just to start with, just to mash the butter down. The other week I was making these and my butter was too hot. Oh, sorry, too hard, so I, I melted it in the, or tried to melt it in the microwave, but I went a little bit overboard, and so I thought, oh, just see what the melted butter is like. So I used that instead, and it was a bit of a mess. <laughs> they tasted really good, but making the mixture, like, stay into the dough, it was a bit um, slimy and oozing out everywhere, so softened butter is better. Okay, pop that to one side and grab a knife or your icing spatula um, on standby, ready to spread into our dough. Prepare a large baking tray. Today I'm going to do one tray with these little baking forms. All the Swedes use these little, they're like a flat muffin case. I found them in the supermarket, so I thought I'm gonna try some today, um, but feel free to just scroll them or knot them up and place them directly on the tray. What I found out from another YouTuber, apparently you use the forms because it stops the butter spreading all over your tray. But yeah, you can just line it with paper and scroll them up. I'm back with my dough and it's doubled in size and it's looking fantastic. I've got this beautiful sunlight coming in from my skylight. So I'm just taking the plastic off and I'm going to flour my bench quite liberally because I don't want the dough to get stuck and our dough was quite moist, so the next step is we're going to remove the dough from the bowl. If you're new to spelt flour, um, it does respond a little bit differently to regular flour. It's a little bit more fragile, so you can't stretch it as much as regular dough. Just put in some extra flour and I have a shaker. So I've got a shaker here with some spelt flour, so I'm going to generously shake some flour onto it.
and the dough's already sticking. So I'm just popping some more flour underneath. What I might do, I might just knead a little bit more flour into it just so it's easier to manage. And I need to roll out to get a, a rectangle shape. It's feeling beautiful. I've got my rolling pin here. I bought this fancy non-stick one. Now it's misbehaving and bouncing back and making noises. That was funny. So let's see if we can get a nice shape. So we don't want it too thin that it falls apart, but we want it kind of a nice thickness. Okay, we're trying to get quite a nice rectangle shape. Dusting some more flour underneath there. Okay, it's good to move fast and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So the next step is we need to add the cinnamon filling to half of it. So I'm just gonna grab it out of this bowl and I'm gonna get my little spatula. I love this tiny little red silicon spatula. It's my favorite thing to use. I've done it both ways. I've done it where I've put the cinnamon filling over the whole dough and I've done it just half. And I think half is better. And there's different methods. Some people fold it over three times, but I find because the spelt dough is a little bit more fragile than regular dough, just doubling it is okay. Anyway, that's what I've found. So I've left a tiny little border. So my head might be cut off, but you can see what I'm doing more. So I'm grabbing the dough and stretching it onto itself. And now the fun part is we're going to try and make our cinnamon scrolls or our cinnamon buns. So grab your tray close by and just grab the rolling pin and we're just going to roll that so it's pushing that cinnamon mixture or filling back into the dough. Okay, I don't have a perfect method and a perfect shape, but I wanted to show you so you could try and do it yourself. So next thing we need to do is we need to cut these. Normally people use a pizza wheel. I've only got this kind of pastry cutter, so I'm going to use that. And we're going to cut about, I'm going to just measure it for you, about three to four centimetre strips. So the ruler is about three centimetres. I'm going to use my ruler today as a guide. So I bought this ruler just for baking and I thought maybe this pastry wheel would be good. And it seems to be doing the trick. So I'm going to lift one up. So what I'm going to do is there's two ways. You can twist it like that and then wrap it around your hand and then wrap it over the top and then tie it under the base. So you get this kind of like scrolled bit and then pop it into this little paper or pop it onto your tray. I'll try that again. My method's not perfect, but circle it around, like twist it, and then wrap it around your hand, and then wrap it over the top, and then tie the base of it underneath so you get this kind of bar. The other way you can do it, you can do it just on the bench if you're struggling with your dough. Just wrap it on the bench. So scroll it like that, and then just swivel it into like a little snail and then tuck the base underneath. That's how I was doing it for a few weeks in a row and I found that easier. But just have a play and see what you can manage because what I found that even if your form isn't perfect, they still taste great. And what happens is the longer you leave your dough, it starts rising on the bench and harder to work with. So let's just do it fast. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, we'll wrap it around. It looks like I'm an expert, but I'm not. And pop it in the pastry, pastry, into the paper. Maybe it's easier to cut one at a time. Let's do the other method, the twist on the bench. I think I need another tray. So I have another tray 
These ones I'm not going to put in the pastry cases for you. I'm just going to do it um, without, so just in case. So just in case you can't get the pastry cases, it's just gone a bit fat on one side, so I'm just going to give it a roll because I'm talking too much. I think my new little bench is too small, <laughs> especially when you've got two big trays. So I've got four without the paper. Next step is we need to brush it with that egg wash. Now I did experiment without the egg wash. If you want to make it without it, you could. It doesn't look as pretty, but they still taste good. Or you could do a little milk wash, like um, with some oat milk or the plant-based milk that you've used. I've just dribbled a bit of egg all over my paper there. So the next very Swedish thing is to add a little bit of pearl sugar, which is kind of looks like little white rocks. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. If you can't get this where you live, you can pop a little bit of raw sugar on top or just leave it off. But it looks very Swedish. Whoops, that was a lot, Sue. And I love the crunch on top. And I probably shouldn't be using my fingers, but I thought it would be quick. Now I need to let them rest for another 30 minutes on the bench. I'm going to cover them just with a little tea towel and then we'll come back and bake them. Oh, in the meantime, pop your oven on to 200 degrees C with a fan. So I'm back to put, pop the buns in the oven <laughs> and I've got a little ramekin of water, which I always put at the base when I cook my bread, just to create a little bit of steam. So I'm going to pop that in first. I'm going to remove the cloth and hopefully it hasn't stuck too much. It's pretty good. So in my oven I can bake two trays at a time because I've got this Neff oven that's got Circotherm. Um, if you've got a regular oven just bake one tray at a time. And my oven runs really hot so they usually take about 10 to 12 minutes but if your oven's a bit slower they might take 15. So I'm going to pop them in now. So my cinnamon buns are all out of the oven. They're still a bit warm. They've been resting here for about 12 minutes. Look at that. The cinnamon has spilled out. My form isn't perfect, but they smell absolutely delicious. Let's tuck into one and see what they taste like. I'll try, I'll try this one. Didn't know which one to try. Can you see that? They're really soft and delicious. They're absolutely beautiful straight out of the oven. So if you're game to try this Swedish treat, carne bulle, if you're like me and you're still a novice at the twisting and um, knotting, give it a go anyway. If they don't look great, it doesn't matter. The family will probably eat them all anyway because they taste amazing. Mm. Cinnamon goodness, crunchy sugar. Mm. Let me know in the comments below if you like this and you're going to give it a go. The next bun recipe I'm going to try is saffron buns. can't remember the name, Swedish, but they're... Shaped like an S, with a little raisin in them. Normally done around Christmas time, but I thought I should start practicing now for Christmas. So don't forget to check out some other spelt recipes up above. I'm going to go away and keep eating this with a cup of tea. I'll drink the cup of tea, but eat this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit the thumbs up if you've liked it. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Yum.